the Dragon was a, a slick vehicle, and uh, we had good airflow, and so we had a excellent, excellent evening, and uh, just excited to be back uh, in low Earth orbit again. Uh, we then launched into into space on board the Falcon 9, and uh, the ride, I'll say, was a little bit smoother than our shuttle experience. The shuttle was a little bit rougher, at least at the beginning. Yeah. Those are the genuine feedback from NASA astronauts about their experience aboard SpaceX Dragon. So what is life inside the Dragon capsule? Why do astronauts prefer it rather than others? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. As you know, Crew Dragon is a variant of Dragon version 2 besides Cargo, which is the only human-rated orbital transport spacecraft of the United States as of 2023, as well as plays a major role in NASA's commercial crew program, aims to ferry astronauts to and from the ISS. From its maiden launch in 2020 until now, the Crew Dragon capsule has achieved many achievements. Take, for example, on earlier June 2023, SpaceX tweeted that Dragon surpassed the U.S. record set by the Space Shuttle for most visits to the station by a spacecraft type. Especially at the time I made it report, Dragon made it dock to the ISS seven times within the framework of the commercial crew program. Meanwhile, its companion in the project, Boeing's Starliner, received more funding than Dragon, but only docked with the ISS once in 2022. According to NASA's latest news in October 2023, Starliner will continue to delay flying until mid-April 2024 at least meanwhile, SpaceX Crew-8 will be no earlier than mid-February 2024. It means the contract between NASA and SpaceX will last up to half of a decade. It is no coincidence that Dragon has achieved so much success and is highly appreciated by interested parties. You can see, besides the sleek appearance, the spacecraft stands out by its modern and solid design. When looking from outwards, Dragon is a block consisting of two main components. The lower part is called the expendable tank or non-pressurized unit, and the upper part is the reusable tank or pressurized unit to load the crew and cargo inside. In addition, the capsule also has a hatch located in the cone-shaped nose used as a docking port to the space station or a domed window and cabin door on the side. Sixteen Draco thrusters are powering the Dragon capsule and eight Super Dracos act as the launch escape system, or LAS. The system plays an important role in any crew spacecraft since it will quickly separate the capsule from its launch vehicle in case of an emergency requiring the abort of the launch such as an impending explosion. The system was tested in January 2020, showing that it was fully operational for the maiden launch of Crew Dragon. Fortunately, the LAS has not been used in actual missions to date, and that is a strong testament to Dragon's reliability and safety. Not only does it stand out for its high level of safety, but SpaceX's spacecraft also has a modern interior comparable to a five-star hotel. When you open the cabin door and look inside, you will see a space with two main tones of black and white reminding us of the quiet luxury style. The capsule has a fairly large volume of 9.3 cubic meters so it can accommodate up to four astronauts with stored cargo below. That design keeps astronauts comfortable during long hour flights. Poor Russian cosmonauts when they have to squeeze inside the Soyuz prison. In a newspaper titled Step Inside Crew Dragon, of CollectSpace.com SpaceX opened the hatch to its Crew Dragon spacecraft, revealing something interesting about the spacecraft's interior. Crew Dragon was designed to be an enjoyable ride. With four windows, passengers can take in views of Earth, the Moon, and the wider solar system right from their seats, which are made from the highest grade carbon fiber and Alcantara cloth. Crew Dragon's displays will provide real-time information on the state of the spacecraft's capabilities. Anything from Dragon's position in space, to possible destinations, to the environment on board, SpaceX added. The computer system inside Dragon operates according to automation and integration mechanisms. Take for example, astronauts will connect to the control system of the capsule via the suit seat system. The core of the system 
is an umbilical cable connecting the chair and a port on the thigh of the suit, allowing nitrogen to flow into the sub's air duct, cooling astronauts. On the helmet part, SpaceX added a new feature, the pressure and temperature sensors that feed the spacecraft with information, allowing it to automate the process. It means that if the astronauts want to adjust their suit pressure, they will not need manual adjustment. Additionally, some commands you have at your fingertips will be adjusted using the touch screen. Thanks to that, SpaceX engineers can minimize hardware parts such as keyboard buttons while astronauts do not have to fiddle with complex control systems and wiring. Remember the displays and controls of Apollo 11? Well, I feel like it's like a map with thousands of codes that challenge the human minds. However, getting sick of a complicated dashboard is not the most terrible thing. Do you know what is more terrifying? Oh, that's the feeling of needing to urinate but not being able to urinate. No kidding. Alan Shepard, the first American in space, had to pee his pants in the Mercury capsule. SpaceX didn't want the same thing to happen to the astronauts aboard Dragon, so a real vacuum-powered toilet was fitted similar to what's found on the ISS. Surely at this point, some viewers may wonder where the unpressurized cargo of the crew will go. Oh, here's a fact that won't shock you too much, because the 12-foot-long trunk, in addition to being the main source of energy for the Dragon, is also the main storage place for human organic trash. It is a common design style on any flying vehicle, including airplanes, in which waste moves through the plane's pipes to the back of the plane and resides in a tank. I hope the above will help you better understand life inside SpaceX Dragon capsule. Like all of you, I also have the dream of one day stepping into this capsule to get the most authentic feeling. This is not just about the fact of enjoying the luxury interior, but also about the desire to relive the historic moment three years ago. Indeed, in 2020, two NASA astronauts, Bob Behenken and Doe Hurley, opened SpaceX's crew Dragon Endeavor's hatch at 1, 2 p.m. EDT, and entered the International Space Station a short time later. The event is under the Crew Dragon Demo 2 program. The arrival marked a major feat, the first docking of a crewed U.S. spacecraft at the station since NASA's shuttle fleet retired in 2011. It's also the first docking of a commercial spacecraft carrying humans. Doe Hurley, NASA astronaut and first SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft commander could not hide his emotions. Uh, we have to give credit to SpaceX, the commercial crew program, and of course NASA. It's great to get the United States back in the uh, crewed launch business, and uh, we're just really glad to be on board this uh, magnificent complex. Thanks to the great efforts of SpaceX, the U.S. has gradually escaped dependence on the Soyuz program to transport its astronauts to the ISS because the space shuttle stopped operating in 2011. NASA crews are also no longer concerned about the cramped space inside that old technology spacecraft. At the same time, Dragon's success paved the way for a new era of the U.S. aerospace industry, the field of commercial space activities. What makes the difference between SpaceX's Dragon capsule and any traditional spacecraft? Does it depend on who made it? Yes. However, most important are always the R&D principles that manufacturers pursue. This is confirmed by astronaut Garrett Reisman, who helped develop SpaceX's crew Dragon capsule and also has experience working with NASA. A NASA veteran who flew on all three space shuttles across two trips to the ISS Garrett Reisman was selected by NASA as a mission specialist astronaut in 1998. After leaving NASA in early 2011, he joined SpaceX, where he served in multiple capacities most recently as the director of space operations. Most notably, he helped the company to develop the human-carrying crew Dragon Garrett Reisman is someone with experience in two radically different space organizations that are cultures apart when it comes to getting things done. Here are his personal thoughts on what kept SpaceX and its Dragon capsule moving forward in the marathon with the legacy agencies. SpaceX likes to move fast and adjust on the go while NASA is far more cautious in its decision making. This cultural gap is perhaps best exemplified by Reisman's experience of trying to get a change to the space shuttle NASA had a shuttle cockpit avionics upgrade program to tweak the vehicle's information displays, but even then the team was extremely limited. Reisman's job was to develop a new way of doing procedures in case of, say, engine failure. 
These procedures used a physical paper guide, so astronauts had to flick to the correct page, identify the fault, and follow the instructions. He suggested the improved method by using a table computer hooked up to the vehicle's telemetry string. That way, instead of identifying the fault and flicking to the correct page, the tablet could locate the relevant issue and display the proper instructions. That immediately got shot down, he says. There was no budget to do all the testing. We can't possibly do anything that complicated. He also noticed one significant matter in NASA's procedure. The procedure guides were usually printed in black and white. They said, what if people are colorblind? Reisman says, I'm like, well, you test all of us to make sure we're not colorblind as part of the selection criteria. Could NASA print the manual in color to improve usability? He admitted that the space agency might have to buy color printers, but as he said, they're like, well, still, we can't do it. During many years serving in the national agency, ultimately, Reisman managed to get one change of any substance into the procedure system. So I said, instead of using a dash cut, we use an arrow, he says. And they said, okay, that's the one thing I changed. Reisman once told the story to Chuck Yeager, the first pilot to fly faster than the speed of sound, Jaeger lamented the fact that the astronauts weren't involved enough in the design and operation of hardware. I told him this whole story and he just looked at me and he said, you sorry bastard, he says. It was frustrations like that that helped precipitate the decision to go to SpaceX. Reisman shared, at SpaceX, we would make a decision in a single meeting that would take years to reach the same decision point at NASA. An environment that encourages innovation like SpaceX has enabled Garrett Reisman to demonstrate his talent in developing American spacecraft for American astronauts. Thanks to that, we now have a means to reach the pinnacle of perfection. In the traditional conception of spaceflight, aesthetics tend to be underrated. This is reflected apparently through the outlook of NASA's pumpkin IV a suit or space shuttle. Nevertheless, Elon Musk broke the rule. Since the Dragon V-2 space capsule was unveiled on May 29, 2014, it shocked the world with its sleek design and has a retool heat shield that will withstand multiple re-entries, unlike disposable contemporary vehicles. The spacecraft also has retractable legs that allow it to land and take off vertically. You've probably seen photos of astronauts crammed cheek to jowl inside Russia's three-person Soyuz spacecraft. It's much too small and tight complains Dutch-European Space Agency astronaut Andre Kupers of Russia's spacecraft. I'm pretty sure no cosmonaut has claustrophobia, the irrational fear of confined spaces. If they have, it's where the Crew Dragon comes in. Crew Dragon can accommodate seven passengers, though a maximum of four will fly on the contracted NASA missions. Four seats, each of which featured plenty of legroom and the ceiling was nice and high. The risk of head bumps seemed pretty low. Dragon's two main components, including the capsule and trunk, stand around 8.1 meters tall, with a diameter of 4 meters, a little bigger than Soyuz. The Japanese 58-year-old astronaut, Suichi Noguchi, who became the first person to fly on SpaceX's Crew Dragon for NASA's inaugural crew, one mission shared about Dragon. The Dragon is the best. I feel Dragon is really ready to go up. It's really fun to ride, and two days in Dragon is really remarkable memories. What's more, as SpaceX engineer John Federspiel said, the company had wanted to make Crew Dragon feel like a 21C century spaceship. He explains, probably one of the biggest features of Dragon are the touchscreens on the inside. We designed them not just to be very functional, but with a user experience in mind. Crew Dragon is an autonomous vehicle, and the first backup will be mission controllers here on Earth. So... The craft's commanders and pilots won't do much active flying during missions to and from the ISS if all goes according to plan. But when astronauts do take the wheel, the experience will be more akin to operating an iPad than flying a space shuttle or fighter jet. Crew Dragon's controls and flight information are arrayed on three large touchscreens facing the commander and pilot, as you can see in these photos of the vehicle's cockpit simulator. And yes, the touchscreens are compatible with the gloves on the SpaceX suit. As Doe Hurley, the commander of the first crewed SpaceX mission, which launched in May 2020, said, and if the automation doesn't take care of a problem, then the ground is your next layer of defense. He referred to SpaceX ground controllers who can problem solve and issue commands to. The spacecraft from the comfort of mission control. 
Only if the dragon fails to look after itself and the ground staffers can't solve the problem would the astronauts take over. This upgrade helps astronauts escape the fear of the sheet metal instrument panels with hundreds of switches, dials, lights, and analog gauges on NASA's old Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules. Their simple onboard computers were controlled by a mechanical keyboard. The commander flew those ships the same way you'd fly a plane with a control stick determining velocity, attitude, altitude, and direction. Can't help but say Crew Dragon's escape system, which is designed to get astronauts to safety in the event of an emergency during launch or any other phase of the trip to orbit. That escape system is powered by eight Super Draco engines, which are built into the wall of the capsule. It's wonderful that four years have passed and SpaceX Dragon still hasn't forced the activation of that escape system, showing the high level of reliability of this human-carrying vehicle. It's what Boeing Starliner spacecraft has not yet demonstrated for a decade. Not only is it safe, but the comfort of the Dragon is also loved by astronauts. NASA astronaut Victor Glover, who joined Crew-1 mission, shared a few words about his experience on Crew Dragon. It was awesome. Dragon performed superbly, Glover added, once the second stage cut off and you're floating. I've been able to feel that for a few seconds, but to have that for an extended period was just truly amazing. The thing that really stood out to both of us, and we mentioned it as soon as we docked, is we didn't feel the docking, Doe Hurley said. It was just so smooth. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.